You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. So we're now going to be talking to um, Martin Gucci and uh, he's going to be talking uh, all about um, uh, developing uh, a swell response to the centenary anniversary of the First World War. Martin, it's always good to have you uh, here at BRFM on the Monday Night Community Show. Thank you very much for uh, joining us once again. Thank you very much for inviting me and uh, taking this opportunity to tell everybody about... uh, the centenary. It's a year to go. August the 4th is the date, the uh, anniversary date of the First World War. Um, and for those people that are organising events, a year is not too long in the planning stages. So uh, I'm here to try and um, raise the profile of the remembrance and the commemoration and to try and get people to let us know what they're planning and what they're doing. So uh, that was our kind of introduction. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the council's uh, role as well. Well, the council, um, should we say, have got a coordinating role. Uh, Working with the national partners, um, we're a partner with the Imperial War Museum who are leading with the First World War commemorations. And similarly with regional organisations including Kent County Council and the Arts Council. We've met with local museums, heritage groups, organisations, societies um, to raise awareness of many projects that um, may be regional but Swale have got a part in. Um, We've also become aware of many projects that local historical societies and and groups are doing and we want to make sure that within Swale we're not reinventing the wheel and that everybody's efforts to commemorate this act of remembrance are are well promoted and those that want to take part or volunteer to get involved have the opportunity to do so. I know you wanted to next cover about the Swale projects that are under development so far Martin. Okay, well, well, basically the commitment from the council is to help and support the local community of Swell to mark the centenary of the First World War. So, to start with, we've um, set up a, a web page on the, on the Borough Council's website um, to try and um, promote what, what we already know is happening, um, but also to encourage those people out in the community that are um, looking at doing an event. So, if you're your group, your organisation, your society are planning an event or an activity, please complete the World War I Centenary Project Form to help us gain an understanding of what support we can offer. Now, once the form's been completed, obviously please send it in to the council. You can fill it in online or or email it into tourism at swell.gov.uk. On the website, we can also provide guidance on planning an event um, and uh, hopefully also promote your event on our Visit Swell website. Website. So, in response to um, the web page that's been created, we've received details of uh, a number of projects that are under development so far. And at this point, perhaps we can mention a few of them. Some of them are regional projects. Um, the first one uh, is a date for your diary. Hold the date, Sunday, June the 1st, 2014. It's Plant a Real Poppy Day. This is a, a Royal British Legion um, um, campaign and um, project. Um, it's been supported by the Heritage Lottery Fund and basically the idea is to distribute 75,000 packets of poppy seeds um, and they will be distributed from December 2013 to community groups, schools, colleges and um, youth organisations, town and parish councils, anyone who can demonstrate a benefit to local people and or a connection to the First World War. So if you're interested in getting involved with this initiative, um, then you know, please give the council a, an email or contact us because, um, once again, the council's role with that project is to help coordinate the swell participation in the Plant of Real Poppy day working with the Royal British Legion and uh, getting their hands on some of those 75,000 packets of seeds. Um, we believe we're working with our open spaces team and the Swale in Bloom organisation um, and perhaps some of those open spaces and some of those uh, historical sites where there may have been First World War defence sites, they may be prime sites where we can see a sea of red poppies um, next year in the summer. So that's one. Um, Another uh, project, which is a local project, is the Sittingbourne War Memorial Project. 
The aim there to produce biopics of those men and women co commemorated on Sittingbourne and the local parishes' war memorials. Again, for further information on that one, uh, we'd signpost you um, via the website to the Historical Research Group of Sittingbourne. Um, they also have a, a Facebook page. It was a project that started with the, the group looking specifically at Sittingbourne, and then they soon become aware that many of the uh, village historical societies um, were also doing it and indeed Linstead and Kingsdown Society um, have been working on a project for two years to develop a book of re remembrance and they, they've been holding sort of workshops and at the end of this both projects I think there's going to be a book that will be produced so there'll be a legacy you know, that those stories uh, of the people whose names appear on the war memorials uh, in our villages and in, in City Bourne Town Centre will be brought to life. Meanwhile, on Sheppey, um, we got the Sheppey Home Front during the First World War project. Um, when I mention this organisation, I'm sure many of you have already heard of the Big Fish Arts and Chris Reed and Chris. Um, well, she's everywhere, isn't she? Yeah, um, you always uh, come across Chris uh, somewhere at an event, uh, and it's uh, always a good show as well. Absolutely. I mean, you know, but she also is very good behind the scenes um, at, at applying for funding. And again, she's gone to the Heritage Lottery Fund, uh, the Young Roots uh, funding, and uh, she's aiming to describe the life on Sheppey for young people, uh, women and older people during the build up to and during the First World War. So I'm sure the Big Fish and Chris will be looking for people to get involved in that. She will be working with the young people of the Isle of Sheppey Academy on that project. And, uh, you know, I'm sure that will be something she's working on so that there will be a digital record of some of the stories um, um, of that project. So that's uh, one project on the island. Another one which... Um, the island played a big part of and I'm sure you may have heard of already was the Defence of Swale project which is an archaeological project which um, the Kent County Council um, are, have been developing and mapping a lot of those sites that have got the military uh, history, the defences, um, the lines of barbed wire, the gun emplacements, uh, the, the trenches that were all along the, uh, the, the cliff tops, the lookout posts um, Borden Bay um, and, and you know on top of the cliffs people keeping a, an eye out uh, Shell Ness um, some of the camouflaged gun emplacements and lookout posts um, so what they've been trying to do from the very beginning and they're looking at volunteers to go out there and identify some of these sites and help plot them on, on a map and it's something that over the next few years, hopefully some of those that have been identified because um, they're doing it not just for the First World War but, you know, uh, the military defences um, and um, right the way through the, the 20th century, including the Second World War. But there are some specific sites which uh, many of you will know and will have an interest in. Again, the, the Defence of Swale, they've got a Facebook page, or indeed you can go to the uh, Kent County Council um, website and there again to find out more information. We cover the whole borough but and if we have a quick trip over to Faversham, I mean the Faversham Society and the Fleur de Lee Heritage Centre, they're busy um, developing a project and that they put out an appeal, they put it out on their Facebook page requesting anyone with an interesting story relating to family members' experiences during the World War One um, to email their stories uh, or contact the Heritage Centre and mark them for the attention of Clive Foreman because Although it's a commemoration and a lot of people think about those people that died, um, and indeed there were 16 million people that died in the First World War and 21 million people were, that were injured, um, you know, and people obviously remember um, the sacrifice that many people gave, but it's also about retelling some of those stories of uh, great, your great granddad, my great granddad, um, and because you know, many of our grandparents still tell us the stories of their grandparents um, and what they did and you know what their day-to-day -day life was in the towns of Swale and how it affected them and also the role that many women had to step up and play. So um, you know, hence the appeal from uh, Faversham and the uh, Faversham Society to try and tell some of those really interesting family stories and experiences, um, especially, obviously, uh, relating to the town of Faversham. Meanwhile, back on the island, um, 
Daniel was telling me during the break that he um, you know, um, recently had an interview um, about the Sheppey Promenade Festival for 2013, about Beowulf and the Vikings and the Saxons and yep. the distant history. Um, well, next year, um, a recent meeting that was held at Bluetown, um, Janice Thornton and many of the organisers, they announced the theme for next year will be the First World War commemorations and to try and raise the profile through art of the role that Sheppey played um, in the First World War, you know, perhaps the poetry, the talks. Um, so already people are thinking about how they can um, use art to try and tell those stories uh, for Sheppey Promenade 2014. And again, if you've got ideas, um, and really would like to lay a marker down thinking about an event which could be part of Sheppey Promenade 2014, then we would urge you to check out the Sheppey Promenade website and contact uh, Janice and some of the other team there. And um, finally, but by no means least, uh, on the island, Blue Town Heritage Centre and uh, Jenny Herkett, who does wonders down there, um, she's recently announced that... Um, in spring of 2014, uh, they'll be dedicating a room at the Blue Town Heritage Centre to tell the story of Sheppey's input in the First World War. Um, this will provide the answers to a number of intriguing questions. For example, why was Sheppey the only place on mainland Britain to have had internal passports? Why was Sheppey um, called, I mean, I'll wait for this one, the Barbed Wire Island? Why were all the aviation activities for the First World War organised from Sheppey Dockyard, Sheerness Dockyard? Why was Warden Point and the surrounding area so important? And this one intrigues me because obviously I, I think it's um, something rather different. It says, uh, who was Captain Scarlet? Now, I think of Jerry Anderson and, you know, that, that series, but obviously Cap Captain Scarlet had an important role to play in the First World War. And why is HMS Africa so important? Why did they bomb Blue Town? All the answers to those questions and much more will be put on display um, at the Heritage Centre um, and together with local facts uh, and an educational resource area where they'll also be producing packs uh, designed for each key stage because it's about education and awareness and Blue Town Heritage are very good at that working with other universities and organisations in the past and that's what they're working to. So we're very um, pleased that Blue Town have shared their plans and that's what we're here for tonight to try and get other people and other organisations to share their plans so that we could tell the world. This is what SWAL intends to do um, and feed that up to the national partners so that people in London know that they can come down to Bluetown Heritage Centre and they can find out about the important role Sheerness Dockyard and uh, you know, the aviation history at East Church and the important role that the people of the island played and those stories in the First World War talking to Martin Goodchew and uh, he's talking all about developing a uh, swell response to the centenary anniversary of the First World uh, War. And we're talking about uh, what some of the uh, community uh, groups and societies are uh, doing and I know you wanted to go on to next covering now uh, what the council are currently working on. Yeah I mean as we mentioned right at the very top, the council's main aim at the moment is to sort of raise awareness of the centenary anniversary, and the, commemora the commemorations and the, the remembrance activities, um, and you know, applaud and promote some of the local groups that have already taken the initiative. But the council themselves are currently working up some projects to raise the awareness, and these will be confirmed. Obviously, they need funding, so we need to see the, the, the funding, and they'll be confirmed in the autumn. But one that I should definitely flag up is um, the, the council leader um, through, us, through officers. We contacted all the schools in Swale um, because obviously it's one of the key aims of the centenary anniversary is for education and awareness. And uh, we've encouraged the schools to try and get involved. And the very pleased to say that the Isle of Sheppey Academy are very keen to lead on, on that educational role and um, uh, are looking to develop a poetry and creative writing competition with the theme of remembrance to commemorate the anniversary. And we're hoping that uh, further details will be announced in September. So there could be prizes for the 
the young people both at primary and secondary school age um, to enter a piece of poetry or creative writing with that theme of remembrance with the opportunity to, to win a prize and also um, we're hoping that the, the schools will support them in producing that piece of work and then the winning uh, student, pupil, um, whichever school that they come from, then the schools will also get a prize. Um, but as I say, details from that are being worked up and uh, we're hoping that they'll be formally announced in, in September. Um, the council are also looking to support the, the mayor in a civic role of remembrance um, and historically the town um, of Sittingbourne uh, in Swale has been linked with Yipa and obviously um, th that town played a very dramatic and drastic role during the, um, the First World War and um, each year on Armistice Day there will be services which I'm sure um, the Mayor will be going over and we're also looking at ways in which we can extend um, the participation and perhaps uh, explore ways in which we can take some of the young people um, with the Mayor over to experience that, um, that day of remembrance on Armistice Day each year. But again this is in developmental stage and we also need to seek the, seek the funding for that. But uh, um, just wanted to sort of touch on the fact that the council are looking at doing their own projects but the key role for the council is to coordinate and promote those projects um, that uh, the swell community are doing but also try and raise awareness of the projects that are happening regionally that um, the people of swell can get involved in as they are announced now when people are looking at doing projects uh, there are obviously, as I mentioned, some national ceremonial events and they will tie in with some key dates. Now the 4th of August is the anniversary, you know, 2014 will be the uh, centenary anniversary when Britain declared war. And then throughout the years ahead we've got uh, the 25th of April 2015 which was Gallipoli. 31st of May, 1st of June 2016 was the Battle of Jutland where you know, a lot of people associated with CNS Dockyard and the Navy um, would have been involved. I do believe that the, the council's leader had a, a relative that was in the Battle of Jutland so there may be something, a, a theme there for some group um, in 2016 with the, with the naval theme. The 1st of July 2016, the Battle of the Somme. 2017 Passchendaele and uh, the 11th of November obviously 2018 Armistice where obviously the uh, commemoration um, and remembrance of the end of the First World War um, but it's not just nationally I mean when, when on Swellborough Council's website we've got a timeline where we've also um, included some of the key dates for Swale for example on the 4th of June 1915 at 11:30 uh, pm on that night um, it was the first aerial uh, bombing of Sittingbourne. Um, and then there was an, another key date on the 2nd of April 1916, Favisham Gunpowder Mill, there was an explosion there. So, and I'm sure that uh, through Jenny Herkett and the Bluetown Heritage Centre, there are some other key dates, especially when... Um, and we look at the uh, formation of the Royal Air Force um, on the 1st of uh, April 1918 and the role that the Sheerness Dockyard played and the, with the naval air arm, should we say, the way that um, the Air Force and the links with the birth of flight on the island, there are plenty of opportunities looking at some of those key dates for people on the island who are really keen and wish to take part or wish to sort of do something to, to mark that local history can get involved in. Now, some people say, all well and good, and we'd love to sort of take part in this remembrance, but we, how do we get the money? Well, the Heritage Lottery Fund have developed a, a funding stream solely for First World World projects. Small projects for funding is available for between £3,000 and £10,000 and you can go to the Heritage Lottery um, Fund website and download the application form and further information. Similarly, for people that are just looking at uh, doing something quite small in an area or you know, something to do a little bit of research, um, don't forget that the Swalborough councillors and Kent County councillors do have a co small community grant funding pots um, and you know, the criteria for that funding is for local projects and that does include heritage projects, they are supported. So th there are ways in which you can get funding for your project ideas, especially around the centenary anniversary. So, plenty going on, plenty in the pipeline, 
and plenty of opportunities and things for you to think about. And Martin, before you go, is there uh, anything else you'd like to cover? And it'd be good if you could uh, refresh our listeners of all those useful contact details as well. OK, for right at the very top, what we're looking at is trying to get people to let us know what they're doing. So on Swellborough Council's website, um, go onto the home page, then you can click through to the uh, uh, dedicated page uh, about the centenary anniversary of the First World War. And on that page, there is a project uh, record form and we'd love you to download that form and put down exactly what you intend to do doesn't matter how small uh, even if it's a case that you'd like to get involved in um, the plant a real poppy day or uh, whatever you're doing in swale we want to know about it so the first thing is please complete that form let us know so we can tell everybody else we can get you the seeds or we can promote your event give you some guidance but it's not just the people in Swale and uh, the Visit Swale website that will do that promotion. Um, Visit Kent are working to promote all the activities that are going on in uh, Kent uh, with regards to the Remembrance activities. And as Visit Kent have got a much greater opportunity to market the events and the commemorations, um, one of the tourism initiatives that Swale Borough Council are doing is to transfer its... A bit of a technical term here, a destination management system. Basically, all our data, all our information regarding accommodation providers, uh, tourism, events, uh, will be um, provided by Visit Ken as of September. So appeal to all those tourism um, um, businesses out there. If you've not got your details with um, Visit Kent by the end of September, then you will not be getting free website promotion through Swale Borough Council. So if you've got any questions on that, please contact us on the same contact details I'm about to give you. So information about the um, centenary anniversary of the First World War, please email us at tourism at swale.gov.uk or call us during office hours on 01795 417 399. That's 417 399. Or indeed, as I said, go to our website, download the application form and send it in by that old pigeon post um, at Swale House, which is in East Street, Sittingbourne, ME10 3HT. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank you, Daniel, very much for giving us the opportunity to raise the awareness. We've got a year to go. If you're planning an event, um, bearing in mind if there's an event where you want more than 500 or you estimate more than 500 people coming along, you definitely need to keep an, um, and produce an event plan. There is guidance on the website. Please contact us. Let's put Swale's centenary activities on the map and make it a success. Martin, as always, it's good to have you here at BRFM. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.